Hey there guys, welcome to another Crossfire cast. Uh, I'm going to jump straight into this game. I think you'll recognize who's in it pretty much straight away if, you, if you've if you sort of been in the KOTU uh, community at all. I'm going to jump straight into it. This is uh, Barton Pierre, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you got to love him or hate him. Uh, but he, he is an excellent player, you know. He, he's uh, a, quite a character. I enjoy some of his antics, you know. Um, so it's, it's fun to see him watch it. But like I said, he's very good at the game. He's very intuitive. He knows what he's doing. So this is his take on a conscript spam. Um, is what we'll be seeing. And his opponent today is going to be Philip Kyle. I believe this is an auto match. I'm not too sure about that though. I just plucked this replay off of the co2.org uh, forums. So um, he's got for a double pioneer start straight off. So he wants to go and cap this uh, this field up here before he builds his first building. Or he just wants to continue capping. But I'm going to switch over to Barton. Barton's the, uh, you know, he's playing the lead role in this, I believe. Um, so we'll see what he's going to do. Shock Horror, first unit out is going to be a Conscript Squad. Um, he's just going to start capping up the map. It's interesting to note on this Minsk Pocket, it's, it's uh, rated one of the most balanced maps um, so far. In terms of statistics, there's about 50 50 win ratio for both uh, Soviet and for the Russians. Uh, Russians and Soviets? Mm, no, Russians and Germans. So. Um, it's it's long. It's got lots of uh, neat little cutoffs and things like that. Um, it's for the area denial, so you've got MG play and things like that. But it's nice and open, so you can do lots of flanks. There's lots of trees. There's clever little plays with line of sight. There's so much to learn about this map that it's it's still so young that you know it's going to evolve quite rapidly, I imagine, over the next uh, few weeks and months. Um, so two concepts out now for, for Barton. Let's um, so have a look at his commanders. He's got concept support, so he's got the rapid conscription, uh, which will replace his uh, his conscripts with the more expensive penal battalions. So we could be seeing some nice uh, some nice satchel charges if he tries to go that route. You have the guard rifle, um, so he's got to hit the dirt in case he wants to go hit the dirt. And he's got the shock rifle front line as well, in case he wants to call in the IS-2 and have some shock troops to buff up his armor. And the KV-8 is obviously a very, very strong heavy tank, doing lots of damage to infantry. We see the third conship being built now. He hasn't uh, upgraded either his um, health yet or his uh, Molotovs, but it's very, very early. He hasn't even seen the guys yet, so Minsk, map, Minsk, Pocket, Minsk Pocket is a big map. <laughs> nice little... Uh, Rewind sign sound there. We have a first engagement now on the right side. We see that he's uh, he's decided to barb wire off this this area here, which is which is nice. It's um, you know it's quite an easy thing to do there, uh, and it denies then the entire region, if you will, unless he has to go through the entire way around, which is long and lengthy, and you usually get caught up in conflict around the fuel point or the victory point instead either as well. So he's getting um, he's getting pushed off away now. Um, the Pioneer Squad will be pushed away, like he's taking one casualty and decides to run away. Meanwhile he's capping up, got an aggressive cap now on the left hand side, which is nice, and he's controlling this area. This is another nice area now, so if you had um, some, some mines or an MG, this is a great place to put it, and it sort of effectively locks your opponent pretty close to his base um, on this side. There's an MG out now, Phil Cow has been recognized, and Conscript's gonna oorah in. Um, it's always nice to oorah in, especially when they're changing to face you, because you can just run straight past it out of the line side and force that unit off the field, look. So, he doesn't have to worry about an MG now for the next uh, 40 seconds or so, which is nice. So you can run free with your Conscripts. So, dominating the map control early, there's four Conscripts out, uh, currently, and still no upgrades yet. He, d he doesn't have any need for them, really. He's just been oorahing in and winning against Pioneers and uh, out-positioning that MG. Going hard now against this Pioneer Squad. This Pioneer Squad is going to have to get out unless he gets some backup coming, which um, doesn't look like. He's going to have to get out of there. Eats another de another death there. So, really, really dominating early. Fifth Conscript now being built. Um, and he's got a nice bank of fuel there if he ever wants to build a building. If he ever needs to build a building. These Conscripts now capping aggressively now in this uh, cutoff area. So if he can go and take this point as well, then he's effectively locked him in the base. Uh, it's very difficult to control this area as well, though, because it is so close to the base. We're seeing this little push coming out now using the MG support, the, uh, the Pioneers. There you go, easily pushing them off. They were trying to build mines there, so it might um, force Philip Carl to actually get the Minesweeper upgrade, which is a bit annoying of the 30 munitions to have to build, but when you're playing against high-level players, you have to sort of... Uh, you have to expect mines, there's going to be mines. They're one of the uh, most cost-effective things you can build and use in the game because if, if someone, you know, it's invisible unless you've got those detectors and if someone walks in it, someone's going to go down. So we've got this flame now doing very nice damage against the conscript and he's in the yellow cover as well, which is happy days for him. He's not going to be taking much damage. This conscript squad is forced to retreat off. But who cares, he's got the sandbag fortress going down. 
Uh, I don't know where they got the sandbags from, but I mean he's got green cover galore. He, he, he can he can sit around and not do much. Either. He starts taking. He is uh, got the initial suppression now from the MG because he's in so much green cover though. Well, he does get pinned there, but when you're in green cover and MG starts firing on you, you uh, take less suppression than you would as normal because the accuracy is reduced. Um, everything in Company Heroes is sort of like based on real life kind of elements. So if you're in green cover, it means you're very hard to see. But this this nice little flank now from these pioneers who unfortunately didn't have enough suppression range from this MG. This MG could have tried focusing on other units to actually pin them to uh, to reduce their efficiency. But this this pioneer squad now is gonna have to get out. He's taking too much uh, damage there. Grandia is picking away at them as well, so I mean, there's still three squads to start here. Um, you can see the MG's been firing at this squad for a little while now, and he hasn't even sort of budged. He, he hasn't been suppressed at all because of that green cover, because of the sandbags. Um, so now he's actually got six conscript squads out. Uh, now the seventh one has just popped out. Still hasn't bothered to upgrade anything. Um, he's, just <laughs> he's just building conscripts. And this is how Barton rolls, you know, this is. Um, him trying to exploit the strategy and why well, is not even exploiting it you know he's, he's just um, showing that doing different things doing uh, unique things really pays off if you've got the patience if you've got the uh, time to practice it, if you've got the micro control it you know this is a lot of units to have out and to be able to uh, make sure that they're all um, capping doing the right thing in the right position or position so that's a nice little flank there he just absorbed, absorbed the MG fire he was able easy enough to just flank around and because he had the positioning uh, he won the positioning battle he won the fight you know he didn't have, he didn't actually do much damage at all um, but he's able to shove away deny his fuel now just by sheer numbers sheer bodies alone we do see the left side is now being capped up slightly by these uh, there you are look yes he's actually got the minesweeper now for his pioneers um, so again, it's mind games. If he, I th I'm not too sure how many other mines he's built. I haven't been following his engineers much, but see, seeing as he's just seen that one being built, he knows that there could be more mines. You know, so he's forced that hand for uh, his opponent, denying him munitions in another flamethrower, for example. Nice to are across now to try and take out these uh, this mortar squad. We see hit the dirt going down. Just nice. So he's not going to get suppressed from this. He can be able to do full damage the whole time whilst taking reduced damage. Um, so this is a bad position for Philip Powell now. You can see he's effectively pinned in his base, even though the territory isn't all capped up yet. Um, you know, there's this, so there's always this swarm coming behind him, just so easily enough. Either if he just needs more body, more bodies, just to sit in front of his base, he can just put more bodies down there. Or if he wants to go around and cap, he can go around and cap. So these dual MGs dishing out a bit of damage. Uh, not a huge amount though, because like I say, hit the dirt. He's got that um, increased armor essentially, uh, armor bonus. They say he just want to get a get, get out of here now. Like he's, he's taking quite a beating. If he even cares, does he even care? Not really. Just, I mean, he's taking his. There you go. Look, look at his sweet time he took. You know, that's um, that's a difficult thing with hit the dirt. You can't just fire on someone who's got hit the dirt. You got to do um. You got to sort of start investing your munitions to try and budge them, or he rightly got a mortar out, but unfortunately, um. It's difficult because more shots are so random. You know, you can get a lucky shot, you can, or you can just be missing all day. So these guys are laughing a bit. They're just sort of sitting in front of this building, MG, now firing away. But they will have to get out of there. They're not going to be doing enough damage to make that efficient. But he's been able to pin that, uh, hold down his uh, this point very easily just by using hit the dirt. And he's capping up on this right side now. Um, he's had the major advantage in the f in the uh, in the map control this entire game so far. These guys now taking enough damage for, the, for his partners to come up and just uh, do a bit of cleansman right on the floor, just take a dive. He's actually going in green cover, right? Okay, this is a very important note. Green cover does stack with hit the dirt, so he's got increased again um, uh, benefits from hit the dirt by using in the green cover. If you're using a negative cover, it's not as effective as it could be. Um, he's not even bothered with blowing Molotovs, um, so he's not using any munitions, he's not using any fuel, he's only using manpower. And again, he's just sitting in front of this base, just trying to hope he's going to do enough damage. Uh, just by time alone, he's going to hope that the, the guys age uh, to death. So, he's lost his little sandbag fortress, which I'm sure he's not very pleased about and will, will want to do something about quite soon as well. But he still holds majority of his control. He, you know, he's not actually losing much at all here. So, he's now actually taking down this MG very slowly. You can see he's not taking any models out yet or any men, but uh, he's doing a lot of damage to them. And he's able to just keep on capping up, so... 
He, he's got healing at his base at least. At least he's taxed something, but he, you know, he's, he, again, he's refused to use uh, fuels or munitions. Um, so, you know, <laughs> he can do what he wants at this point. You know, if he, he's got he's got enough resources to do what he wants. He's got enough map control to, to dictate the pace of the game and the momentum. And oh boy, uh, I mean, he's got um, just conscripts everywhere. Just conscripts, conscripts, conscripts. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Apart from these, these. These scum. These buildings scum. What are you doing? Get out of there. You don't belong in the army. You, you've had training. You, you don't need training to be in the army. You just need to be a man. Or a woman. So, um... We see now that uh, Philip Carr has actually managed to push out his base and he's going to have a little bit of control of these. Uh, take advantage, hopefully, of some of the screen cover he's got available on the middle resource point. Lies up some mines as well, which will be spotted and noted by Barton. I'm sure he's uh, aware of that. Um, this guy might go down if he loses his minesweeper. He's mm, not going to be happy with way nicely enough, though. And like I say, this MG is probably pretty pissed off. He's been in this building all day, shooting at the same contracts all day, and they just keep popping up. And they keep just being annoying. But <laughs> hey, man, it's working, you know? So he's got he's got all this uh, all these units but base doesn't matter he's still got all the, the map control although like I say Philip Kyle is making a bit of a breakout now so he's starting to realize this is just a conscious ban this guy is going to go down though um, I mean it was inevitable and as soon as he got out of the building he was dead meat anyway um, but he, I mean he's taken three four squads to sort of just uh, pay sole attention to him this is the fourth squad this is it's probably a fifth squad a sixth squad that has retreated um, but all of <laughs> All of his units that are on the field at the moment are just focused on getting out of this machine gun. <laughs> and it's working! It's working, you know? So he decided it's time to play serious. He's gonna start using some munitions now. He's gonna get all these uh, these guys with his PBSHs as he just lit level 2 of the CPs. Panzer Grenadiers out on this side. It's not the best counter, unfortunately, for uh, Hit the Dirt. Um, you'll find early on you can just run in with your Panzer Grenadiers, especially against unvetted conscripts on Hit the Dirt, and you'll start winning. However, the more you do that, the more better see that the conscripts actually get, um, just from taking the damage and dishing out a little bit as well from PPSHs. When they start getting better see, that's when they start getting really difficult to dislodge, especially with Panzer Grenadiers. Um, ideally, you need some, some sort of Flamer uh, play. Flamer's very, very good, especially against the dirt, um, and as well as area of effect as well. So if you can get some, um, possibly mortar play, but mortar is difficult, you know. Um, snipers, snipers just be overwhelmed so quickly. The MGs do a good job of holding them down and suppressing them, so if they can, uh, they can actually capitalize on that with so Oh, some nice little grenades going off there, look. I mean, it doesn't really matter for Barton, he's going to keep walking all over them, but I mean, it's giving him a... Uh, a nice little confidence booster, which I think he needed, and he's, <laughs> he's using this gift that uh, Barton's left him with these, this wall of sandbags from the fortress, just running into all of these mines, being very annoying. So he does force off one of the squads, but the other one is pinned. The one's got hit the dirt, he's finding more mines. Um, so, very, very nice little hard point there, look. So, and the mortar there as well to back him up. I mean, this is a very strong front. However, I mean, it's only in one third of the map section. So, I mean, this area is completely open, apart from these Panzer Grenadiers. These Panzer Grenadiers are going to find out the hard way that it's not very nice to encounter these PPSHs. Does throw this grenade, which is going to do quite a bit of damage. But if Barton actually just stuck that out and stayed down for a little bit longer, um, the bundle grenades are high damage, but in, in a small area. So, um, when you're using Hit the Dirt, I mean, your troops are generally spread out. Uh, it was quite a nice grenade, as you can see, but they're not going to wipe squads out. Like miraculously, rifle nades will. If you've got, if you've got vetted uh, con uh, grenadiers, using that area effect damage, it is low damage, but it encompasses them more. Um, so you'll start noticing they can actually pick off, start picking off some uh, low health hit dirt squads. But hey, who cares, man? You still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squads. It's massive. So in uh, in a very small amount of time, we're going to see him. He's going to hit uh, the third command point. In which case he's going to be able to get rapid conscription, which is at the cost of 200 munitions. He can effectively, if he so chooses, replace every single one of his conscript squads with penal battalions just by killing them. Um, so <laughs> I hope he does it. I hope he does it. I'd be disappointed if he didn't. Um, because... There we go. Look, he's, got, he's hit Vet 3. I'm just going to have to pay attention to make sure he's... he's not blowing them up without me knowing. You might just sort of wait for them to engage, retreat them home instead of actually just reinforcing them, just blowing them up. Um, so maybe just get one last little bash of um, 
free manpower, I, I suppose, out of them before sending them to their doom. So nice, I mean like I say, he's got so many conscripts, he can send them out in so many different directions. We send a couple down here and on the right side. He's got a nice uh, large flanking coming down the left side. He's ignoring this middle bit, which is rightly so, because it's very heavily defended, thanks to his own sandbags. These guys are going to protect his fuel, though. They're going to hit the dirt as soon as they get there, probably. There you go. Just to make sure he gets... Uh, he won't be moved from there or budged. I mean, I was capping up all on this left-hand side. Like I say, I mean... This is one big hard point, but it's all facing one direction. Now, I was speaking earlier on about having lots of flanks and lots of nice areas to go around. And here he goes. I mean, he's got this very easy back door, in which case he can just come and start taking away at the mortar, the MG, forcing the MG to move position. So his conscripts up here can start moving in nice and easy. It's um, a very much a domino effect. We do see now he's actually gone. Uh, I missed this. He went tier 1. He's gone straight into tier 4. So he's going to go and get... <laughs> Uh, a couple of SU-76s, he probably just wants to use the barrage to uh, dislodge everything out of here, that free barrage, nice and handy. Now we see these conscripts engaging uh, a nice variety of troops, he's not going to be able to stick that out too long, but he will do a little bit of damage, which is nice, and he's still holding his fuel while his guy's coming around him, so now we see this, uh, this very nice flank coming into play, he's actually gone for a P4. Which is interesting, I didn't realize he had enough fuel to do that, but he has held his own fuel for quite a long time. Now this P4 can actually just start running over hit the dirt conscripts, if he so chooses. Um, so he forces the retreat there, he's got this half-track out, but I imagine he hasn't got the munitions, he's been throwing quite a few grenades and things to get for the flamer. He went for the flamer, he'd be in a lot better position. Meanwhile, on this side, engagement up top now, one of these conscripts is probably going to go down. Uh, yep, he does actually go down there to this nice little push, but I mean, he's still got so many more conscripts in the field, it doesn't matter. P4 now doing his little rampage trick where he just comes up and says, Check me out. A nice little barrage coming on in his own fuel now. Um, we'll see if he's going to start getting some lucky shots. I thought that might be a luckier shot than it was. Um, but he's going to keep pinging away, which is nice. And there's another SU who's going to be able to come up. Here we go. There's the detonate. Here's the detonate look. So he set this up ready to go. And what you're going to see is he's going to hit rap conscription. Oh, I can't wait to see this. He's going to hit rap conscription. It's available now. Uh, it's up and running. He's going <laughs> to run all of his troops in to make sure they actually die. And boom! There he goes. <laughs> Three free Pelham battalions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He might even just throw a satchel charge on these guys, or he's going to keep them actually, look, he thought. Well, they've taken the damage. He's getting the veteran shoot there as well. So. <laughs> it's a smart little trick, you know? Um. Generally, when you look at rapid conscription uh, for the Ostrapans and for the uh, penal battalions, you think, well, I didn't want to lose my squads in the first place. So that's kind of like you think, well, it's a very expensive um, and inefficient use to do it as you're like, oh, I might lose this battle, I should turn rapid conscription on. And then if you don't lose your troops, then, well, then you just wasted 200 munitions, which would have turned the edge of the fight. But do it on purpose. Do it on purpose and you will be rewarded. Turn off Essen, offense into defense, Wing Chun, you know, doing the whole Bruce Lee styles he couldn't do. Nice. I don't know, I probably, he probably didn't have that mind when he did all this stuff. This P4 is going to very easy to take away the SU 76. So, players going down here, we might see a strafing run possibly. Oh, there's a lot of artillery to there. SU 76 goes down quite easily, so we see the artillery is picking away, forcing ships forward. But he's not too bothered. Are we going to see any? I haven't actually seen any satchel charges out yet, which um, might just not have had the right time, right opportunity. But he's been pushed away now. He can go back to his base. <laughs> he's made another SU-76. I think he's uh, just sticking to his guns here on what he wants to do, and he's not going to adapt. It's not going to change. He wanted to do this, and he's by God, he's going to stick by it. As incendiary, uh, incendiary barrage goes down, pick away some of the troops, make him retreat out. Uh, He's going to barrage into the rest to see if anyone's still alive there. These Panzergrenadiers fishing around, looking for something to shoot at. They're going to encounter these conscripts, which I'm not going to be too happy about. He uses his uh, infantry blitzkrieg to get out of there. This P4 now silly gets drawn in and eats, a, uh, eats an 18 aid for his bother. I mean, it's, it's, um, it was a poor decision by him to actually start moving this P4 in, trying to go for the base rush because he knows that he's, uh, Barton's had all this advantage. He knows that Barton's a very good player, and he's trying to chase these units down, and he's eating so many shots just from this SU-76 alone. Um, very soon he's going to have an SU-85 out, so you're not going to bother that much. We might see a nice satchel shot. I would like to see a nice satchel shot coming out. He's not effectively pinned in his base. He's still got contrips out there trying to cap up and things, so um, the SU-76 is now getting better and see after popping away so many shots of this P4. This P4 will go down, but not without getting better too, and causing some hassle for these. Italian, Italian, it actually goes down, 
So therefore he just paid for that tank very luckily just by taking out that penal squad alone. And I mean actually he's actually still a second about here comes the S85. He's not gonna fire until he's actually on the field and controllable. There we go. Oh, one more shot. And he's down. Um okay, I'm just gonna switch over to Philip Carl, see what his army composition Wow, look at his army composition difference. It's huge now. After being stuck in his base for so long and having uh having himself being ground and ground and ground down by all those conscripts, he's very nicely organized himself a uh, pretty pretty versatile army. I mean he's got plenty of uh, pioneers in there, so he's got a lot of um, repairability, a lot of mines he can set up. He did just lose that P4 and he knows there's an SU-85 on the field now. Um, but if we look over Bottoms, Bottoms bottom base is not having a good time anymore. Um, you know, this massive, massive conscript army has dwindled. He... Uh, sorry, I just had to... Okay. Okay, rapid construction just says it replaces up to two squads. Um, but as we just see, he actually just got called in with three penal battalions. So I don't know if there's some little tweak there, if, if uh, it's meant to be only two, but you know, it can go up to the five. He did have five troops in there, maybe he's done it before, maybe he's just trying it out, I'm not too sure. Um, but like I say, this, this, this massive man advantage that he had, the huge um, supply, endless bodies to go and do his bidding, is dwindled, but he's got these SU-76s. And like I say, Bottom's a good player, he's a good smart player, he's very experienced from both Company Heroes 1 and in Company Heroes 2. Um, obviously he's the ESL winner, uh, beating Hans in a uh, best of three match quite recently, last weekend I believe it was. Um, he's going to encounter these nice Shrek their Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers are very nice against su 85s because they do very little damage against infantry. Um, the SU-76s, a couple of Panzer Grenadier shots will hurt. But uh, if they eat a barrage for the bother, then they're really going to suffer for that. Um, we see he's got this little hard point now. Like I say, he had the sandbag wall, which has pretty much been demolished by artillery. Um, and he's got the med bunker. Now, what that means is uh, it's actually giving Barton the target, if you will. You, know, you can always aim for that point if you want something to hit. If he hasn't got any armor to shoot that, he can just shoot at that. Uh, this MG is going to have a bit of a difficult time trying to take down this SC 76. <coughs> he's going to give it a bash anyway. Good on you, son. Good on you. Uh, okay, bit of an interesting setup there. Maybe a misclick, or just trying to defend this area. Um, but we see him. He, he's so excited to charge on in. Um, so he's using his fast march, which is a global ability, giving all your troops a nice little uh, movement bonus. But he's eating a lot of barrages here. Three SU-76 barrages piling on in in different locations. It's very hard to track where they're all going and how much uh, damage they're all doing. So it's very disorientating for um, for the opponent here. Button is just toying these Panzer Grenadiers. He doesn't have the conscripts out just to actually do any damage to him. So one of the SU-76 does go down. The SU-85 is taking quite a bit of damage. Um, but hey, man, it's Button. I'm sure he's got an ace up his sleeve. I know he, he knows what he's doing. Even if he's just having a good time. What he does have, he has conscript repair. Um, so what he can do with these tanks now, he can just, if he wants to, just use conscripts to repair them. Because um, then his, his engineers did go down. Uh, but like I say, they were scum. They weren't real conscripts. They weren't real men. They weren't going to sacrifice everything for the motherland. They were wanted to go build things and plant things. And, uh, I don't know, go play Minecraft, you pussy. To anyone who plays Minecraft out there, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're not a pussy. I've never experienced it. I'm not very artistic. Have you seen my banner? It's crap. I made it myself. Alright, so there we are. He's using his contrib to repair ability nicely because he's healing up all his vehicles, which he wants to do. Um, he is forfeiting some of the map now. I mean, it's, uh, it is roughly 50 50. There's, there's one more point in the uh, favor of. Uh, uh, what's his name? I, kept, I keep thinking Jeremy Kyle. Damn my British bloody heritage. Philip Kyle. Brother of Jeremy Kyle. Less crappy talk show stuff. SC76 in a bit of bother now with these uh, nicely vetted Panzer Grenadiers. We've got their ma fast march on to try and get that one last hit off on it, maybe. But he's going to eat an incendiary barrage. Nicely placed incendiary barrage. Taking down these guys. He's vetted engineers. Just about going to be able to get out. He doesn't want to retreat the squad just yet, but he's got three hungry conscripts looking him in the face on the floor, being like, Come at me, baby. And he probably will go down in the fire now, which is. Nope, he's actually getting out of the fire quite easily. But a nice little victory there for Barton. Um, his army composition hasn't changed all that much. Um, I'm curious to see what he's going to go for, whether he's just trying to get some fuel together and get another 
Uh, SC seventy. Well, he is getting another SC seventy six. There we go. So these board, <laughs> these mortars being very annoying. If he takes one more, he's going to be in world of hurt. Oh, Ooh, very lucky. Okay, this is the whole luck factor of the game. You can't dictate that your mortar squad is going to have an excellent barrage or a terrible barrage. It's just going to barrage, you know. And if it hits, it hits. Happy days. If it doesn't, well, it's the roll of the dice. That's the nature of the units. The entire nature of the game, you know. Um, so that's what adds that fun element to it, you know. When you get that ridiculously lucky crit hit from a mile away and you're like, Jesus Christ, I thought the guy was like, well clear. And sometimes you just, you get you so frustrated, but then the elation you get when you actually pull it off, uh, it's worth it. Very much worth it. So it keeps the game varied and uh, enjoyable to both watch and play. <coughs> okay, I'm going to switch quickly over to Philip Kyle, not Jeremy Kyle. Uh, so we see he had the fast march on, we can see that, so he's decided to try and counter these guys now with his Jaeger Infantry uh, uh, Commander. So it gives him this nice G43 rifle um, for his Grenadiers, which is very good against infantry. Very, very, very good. I mean, it, it doesn't do the suppression that the LMG does, but it does a lot more damage, I find it's a lot more accurate. Um, and he'll start having a good time with it. Plus, it gives him tactical infantry, and be able to run around. He's got the stealth, I haven't seen him use that too much, and rightly so. I mean, he hasn't really been in a position where he's had the man advantage to go and hide his troops. Uh, unfortunately, these Panzer Grandiers are in a pickle. Uh, they're not going to be happy when they can try and get out and run past this Vet 3 Construct Squad. He's going to have something to say about that, so that guy's more than likely dead. We're just going to leave him to it. Nice, Spindle Charge coming out of these Pedal Battalions! <laughs> he takes... <laughs> hey man, I bet he planned that. That's Barton stuff. He's going to throw a Satchel Charge. He's going to take himself down with you as well, man. You know, it's all part of the fun. This Ostwin now from Philip Kyle is a nice choice, nice addition. I mean, um, he does know that there's an SU-85 out in play, but if he can just uh, avoid that and use his speed... Um, to be nimble enough to avoid the fire, then he's going to get some nice kills and start vetting that guy up. Um, okay, again, he's using this sort of this central area, the central VP as a focal point for his main defense. He wants to lure uh, Barton PL in to this little sort of alley of death, and Barton's not having any of it. You know, he's using his troops wisely. He's going out and capping up on the sides um, until Barton decides he's going to commit and sort of sense something to it. So I mean, this is, the, this is a little bit poor by Philip Kyle, because he showed his Ostwind, Barton knew that the Ostwind was there, so he's going to start going looking for it with a counter. As soon as you reveal a unit like this, which you know has um, a counter on the field, move it, relocate it. Um, but I might, we may not we see this Panzer 4, uh, sorry, Panzer 4 now, takes down an SU-76, he's going to get taken down as well, if he can get one more shot off. Mm, not quite, unfortunately, but I mean, um, he has managed to get this Panzer Grandier down to very low health. We do see some, um, I believe that's his close air support. Let me double check what it was actually called. I apologize, I don't know the name of it. Yeah, stick a close air support. Um, it's not great, but it does do a decent amount of damage to light vehicles and infantry. Um, so it's 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 smart to try and catch those those guys out with it, but I mean, that was... They, they are quite, they're quite fast, they're quite nippy, those little things. Um, it's a light vehicle after all, so it's very easily um, just got out of there, and it's a, a massive munitions dump for for his opponent. Jeremy Kyle's best friend, brother, his mother, friend, sister, daughter, dog? Yeah, you know what I mean. So now, with the ebb and flow, we've seen that uh, Button had the huge advantage in the early game, and his opponent then was able to get out of space, break the base hold, and take back a lot of the map with a nice, uh, nice aggressive, um, aggressive and defensive play again. He had that hard point in the middle, and he was able to push out the uh, the sides and sort of hold different points. He's using the buildings well against the dirt. Um, Barton just trolling around hasn't even got his uh, molotovs. He doesn't believe in them. He doesn't need them. He's just going to use sheer brute force and manliness, his headbutt walls and stuff, and uh, that's how he's going to get stuff done. Um, but it's working, you know? Because now we see this this SU-76 spam, which is great, because he's got everything he needs here. He's got a huge amount of barrage. Um, he's got the infantry to tie up other infantry if he needs it. Uh, he's got his SU-85 uh, SU to deal with the heavy armor. He can easy enough throw a 18-8 on this guy if he's paying attention. He doesn't want to stay and hit the dirt too long, so he will start getting run over if this guy micros the P4 correctly. Throw your grenade, son! No, he doesn't want it. Too easy that way. He's just gonna send SU-76s to start pounding away up here. Nice barrage there, catches two of the pioneers. Oh, another couple of barrages coming in. Unfortunately, some of them taken out. 
the uh, the walls around the watchtower and pounding the watchtower. Uh, I wouldn't want to be an engineer right there right now. Uh, that sucks. We do see a nice flank coming from this P4. He's going to catch the side arm of all of these guys. Meanwhile, the SU-85 is slightly out of position, but he can very easily maneuver him to come into the firing. There you go. Starts doing damage. Look, those seven SU-76s, they add up. They add up big time, look. Uh, he's going to call down another probably close support run. I'm not too sure. But his P4 goes down, unfortunately. I mean, he sensed the right... Uh, he had the right spidey sense, yeah? He sort of... Uh, recognize that these vulnerable guys are out. He only takes a couple of shots and he's suddenly making money. He's in the bank. He's going to continue chasing these guys now because that S-85 was out of position. But look at the damage these guys are pulling off. They're, they're not... Uh, he's actually got the S-85 now in position to turn around and face the guy. He's got the nade off in him as well. So this is effectively all of the armor completely neutralized by one of the most underutilized vehicles in the Soviet army. Uh, a lot of people just regard this unit as useless. They write it off. They don't even bother getting them. But hey, look, it's just, it's working, you know? Um, the whole balance issues and things like that that people sort of um, think about, it, it's its not so much that as when you sort of know the other players go, oh, well, this is very strong, I shall do this. Um, you sort of tend to follow the gr the crowd, and that's what we mean by the meta. Um, it's, the, it's people's current perception of what is strong, what is weak, what is worth it, what is not worth it, the risks to take and the, uh, the chances to avoid and that sort of thing. So the SU-76s are powerful. That barrage about, uh, ability is great at dislodging any defensive emplacements, uh, which you focus quite regularly against German players. Obviously, they can build bunkers. They can build the um, the big Pack 43 emplacement. Uh, so it, it's it's going to dislodge any of those very handily and easily. And it's cheap. It is cheap for that barrage ability alone. It's good. Uh, let alone the actual damage it's able to get off on things and the speed it's got as well. So after that rather um, unfortunate and poor engagement by Philip Carl, you can see his army is reduced somewhat. He's still got quite a few of his pioneers out there, but I mean, they're not doing a whole bunch of much. The MG is sat down here because he just wants to defend this VP. He needs to cling on to at least one VP so it uh, inhibits the drain he's suffering. Um, but unfortunately, because he's had to sacrifice this unit just to sit in here, He's losing some of the map control he could have had. Um, I mean, he could have kept that mortar squad in play if he's using the MG over there. But it's it's a very difficult uh, risk to take because it's Sod's law. As soon as he takes that MG out of that building, well, buttons there knocking on the door like you know, not taking that VP. Um, it's a nice little flank coming out on these penals. Um, these pioneers doing a nice little bit of flame licking. The uh, Hans Grandier is going to start blowing the shit out of them. But here comes the big boys, and swap back over to Barton. Look at it. Look at it. Beautiful. Beautiful destruction and damage and woof! Explosions and shit, yo. It's good for you. Ah, uh, probably just saw a trademark there by saying that. Uh, probably shouldn't say that anymore. But uh, it, he's in, this gives him complete control over an area of the map. Utter, utter control. It doesn't matter if it's uh, if he had like an elephant just sat right here. Well, maybe if he had an elephant, it'd be slightly different. But um, he can just sit back and barrage away. Um, and as soon as he sees a threat coming, he can just nip out. I mean, the barrage really does have quite a cooldown. It's got about a minute cooldown, like, even if maybe a little bit longer. Um, but he's got four of them. He's building another one. He's getting a fifth one, man. You know, if he's going to build a unit, he's going to make sure he gets the. Uh, Absolute most he can. Um, doesn't believe in using weak units or units he doesn't need. Very smart, very clever. I these penal, penal towns. Penal towns were a bit of a, uh, bit of a, an odd one. They didn't really do too much. So you have got quite a few deaths in them both. Well, twelve between the two of them. And as soon as they're free, do it. They, they are uh, better than conscripts. Better than conscripts. Obviously, you can't use the hit the dirt ability. Um, which is sad for them, but they do get a such charge, which is good for the lols, and he can uh, upgrade the flamethrowers if he needed to. So there we are. Look, this is the MG being uh, being smart, sticking to his ground guns. Uh, as soon as Barton sees it, he hits the dirt. So the MG isn't actually going to be doing any suppression to these guys, but he will do damage over time. I mean, um, he should win this fight. Something to note uh, is that this MG. Switch just quickly over to Philip Kyle's to sort of show you. If I can show you. Anyway, because he's vetted, he's got this fire and sindri armor piercing rounds, okay? You switch that on, and it starts melting people up. It starts chewing them to bits. And, 
whether in the, they're in building, they're in cover, no matter what, they start hurting a lot. Um, I don't know how effective they are though against troops in Hit the Dirt, but I imagine they start doing a lot of damage as well. So, again, that's one of the underutilized abilities I feel in the game. You don't see a lot of people doing it. Now we see this big huge push coming out, which is very, very poor because, oh, he's actually going to use the, uh, the run fast to try and evade all this barrage coming in, but it's a lot of risk. He's going to take a lot of damage coming in here. Look, units going down, taking a lot of damage, just sitting in there, unable to move out his troops. Take the sort of the slow from the barrage. He comes firing through. He might just take down one of them, but this uh, this P4 is going to go down instantly. The Stug 3 went down pretty much instantly. All of these troops are now very low health. This is one last hurrah, I feel, from uh, from Philip Kyle, and he's going to be frustrated that he lost this. And here he goes. So there we have it, guys. That's Conscript Spam Take Two. Courtesy of the nation's favorite troll, Bard and PL. Thanks very much for this replay. Um, what could he have done differently? It's hard to say. I mean, um, MGs, yes, they they uh, prohibit the advance of the conscripts, but they don't do enough damage, really, um, to validate you just using the unit to sit there. I mean, if he can just sit there and keep throwing bodies at you and throwing bodies at you and throwing bodies at you, well, then he's going to keep doing it. It's cheap, you know. He's going to be able to start taking the shots off on those MGs and doing the damage. Uh, if he decided to go Molotovs as well, then, you know, three three contracts running at one MG squad is not going to have a chance in hell. Um, so it's difficult to say, you know, he could have used mortars. The mine play was very good. If he, if he was um, able to plant more mines around the field, that'd been great. But unfortunately, the mines are 80 munitions for the anti-personnel mines. Uh, that's a lot, especially seeing as he could, obviously, he got flamers. He's trying to use his bundle nades. He's trying to use his rifle grenades. It's very difficult uh, to actually counter this effectively right now. I think one of the best things you can do is get a hot flame half track out. Just save your munitions, just go with the flow until you can get that flame of half track out and then keep that thing alive for as long as humanly possible because uh, as soon as that starts vetting up again it becomes such a tank, it becomes such a, an unbelievably hard thing to kill and it just seems to survive everything um, and it's going to start wiping those squads. That's effectively what you need to do to really um, to hit back at this contract is to wipe the squads, not just do damage um, because they are the cheapest units to reinforce in the game. He needs to wipe squads. Um, so what he could do is, is I guess, go and demo demo charge the base. <laughs> but then I think uh, I think there's a little counter for that now with this uh, this brand new build of bottom uh, bottom PLs. But there we have it, guys. Thanks very much for joining in for this cast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned a thing or two. Hope you had a giggle. Hope you've had a uh, I don't know, just a good time in general. Thanks very much for joining me, guys. Stick around.